Welcome to our broadcast today. I'm Pastor Dwight Lapine. I'm the pastor of Calvary Baptist Church. It's truly a privilege to have you with us today. It's our desire to help you come to know God. If there is anything we can do to help you, we'd love to have you call us. The number's on the screen, or you can contact us on the website that's listed below. Once again, we appreciate you being here. If there's anything we can do to help you, please contact us. Good afternoon. My name is Gabriel. Let me take you to a place where there is no time as you mortals know it, where time is not measured in minutes, seconds, or hours. Let me take you to a place called heaven, where everything is perfection, where angels fill the courts of God with song, where, where there are, but this is no Excitement is everywhere. The angel choir has been called together for a grand rehearsal, but they don't know why.
Kevin, do you realize that you're late for a very important choir rehearsal? Truly sorry, but I keep forgetting to check the Heavenly Sundial. What were you doing that was so important, Hark? Who, me? Yes, Hark, you. What in heaven were you doing that can make you forget to come to... What in heaven were you doing that can make you forget to come to choir practice? Why? I was talking to the Son of God. going on? I don't have the slightest idea. Well, I wish I knew. Choir, I know that all of you are just as curious about what is going on as Hark is. To tell you the truth, I don't know all the details, but I do know that something mighty wonderful is about to take place down on Earth. Well, what on Earth is it? Listen. God is about to... To do what? Well, Hark, God wants members of this choir to sing the greatest announcement that has ever been made. Do I have any volunteers? Ooh, me, 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 me. Oh, 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 I want to go. Oh, oh.
There doesn't seem to be any limitation on how many more may participate, so let's all get involved. You mean I can do it? And me? What about me? Me too, please. Me too? Her too? You too, Hark? Now we all need to practice. Aww. So let's get warmed up. Start the metronome. Pitches, please. If I never take the time to practice, I will never be the best thing. Now, do you all remember the Glory to God in the Highest song we sing by the throne on Hosanna Day? Yes. Well, we are going to add a new part to that, and it goes like this. And peace on earth to men of goodwill. Peace. peace. But there has never been peace down there on earth. They like to fight each other. Yep, they're always fighting about something. Do they even know what peace is? No, nobody down there knows what peace is. These earth wings have no peace. Quiet, quiet, everybody. Let's take it from the top. Quiet, please. Gabriel, I'm going to go ask him what's going on. Gabriel, sir, may I ask you a question? Mom, what? I said, can you tell me what's going to happen down on earth? What's your name? I'm Hark. Hark the Herald Angel. Oh, I know you. You're the one that likes to talk and ask questions. But, sir, I'm a Herald Angel, and Herald Angels have to make announcements, and those who make announcements have to know what's going on. Oh, my. I know 
knows what means all the important announcements around here, so you really must know what's happening. Well, I only know what God tells me. Has God told you what's going to happen down on Earth? Do you know what we're singing? What about? Whoa, let me ask you a question. What do you know about the people down there on Earth? People down there are called human beings. I've heard that humans fight and cheat and hate and lie and kill and... God knows that heart. It saddens his heart to realize that man has turned out so badly. He realizes that man is by nature a sinner. Gabriel, why doesn't God do something to make human beings better? That's exactly what God is going to do, Hart. That's the answer to your question. But I don't understand. Then listen to me carefully. Time has come for God to show those human beings what he's really like by becoming a human baby. Baby? Baby? baby. The baby's name will be Jesus. Jesus? But how will our big God ever fit into a tiny baby?
But Gabriel, I have another question. That doesn't surprise me one little bit. What's your question? It's simply this. Why would God leave this beautiful place to go down there on Earth? He'll, he'll do it because he loves them so very much. But how will loving people make them better? He'll love them. I'm glad you asked that question, Hark. He will love them so much, he will pay the price for their sin by dying for them. Dying? Dying? So that man will never have to die if he set, accepts his love. Boy, he must really love them a bunch. Tell me, Gabriel, when is this baby going to be born? It's going to happen now. Come along, Hark. But where? Where are we going? You'll see, Hark. Come along.
But Gabriel, this is just a pasture. Look, everyone's asleep, including all the animals over there. You're right, Hark. The world is a very dark place. But we have an announcement of good news, which is sure to wake up the world. But Gabriel, these were just shepherds. Why are we giving this awesome news to them and their sheep? The news, these are not just shepherds. The news will not stop with them. They will share the good news with everyone they meet. The, they will tell the good news that God has come to our world and his son, Je Jesus. Someday there will be peace. Well, Hark, here we go. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. return to your everyday world, praising God for his unspeakable gift, Jesus. Well, I guess it's time for me to go back to heaven. Hey, Gabriel, wait for me! Well, praise the Lord uh, for the opportunity to be here today and present a great uh, program with a great and incredible message. And that message, I, I feel, if I could just go back and take a look at a couple of the lines, if you're able to hear them at a couple of points in the, in the uh, play here, that really kind of stuck out as an opportunity for us to think about why we're really here. And the question kept coming up about, from an angel's perspective, why? What about all these humans? I mean, they want peace on earth. How can they have peace? We know about those, and I don't know if they, they probably do, they observe all the things that uh, we do, but how could, it, how could humans even want peace? And yet uh, the whole message of why Jesus Christ came to this earth was kind of a struggle for them to understand. Man is by nature a sinner. You and I all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, each and every one of us. And Hark had this question. He said, well, why doesn't God do something to make human beings better? I mean, if we are by nature and inherently we are sinners bound to be separated from God forever because of our sin. That is what we truly deserve, is to be separated from him because of the choices that we make. Hark had a very valid question. Well, why doesn't God do something to make human beings better? And Gabriel said, well, he's going to show them his love by becoming a human baby. And Hark's immediate response was, oh, I get it. And I'll just quote the line. 
when baby Jesus grows up, he'll fight all the wicked humans, and he'll start a giant war on earth, and all the evil people will be killed, and then the world will be the way God wanted it to be, and he'll be king. But that wasn't God's plan, was it? To start a war and defeat all the, the wicked humans. He showed us his love by becoming a baby. He said, no, Hark, he will love them so much that he will pay the price for their sin by dying for them in their place. Jesus Christ, and the reason that we celebrate Christmas is because Jesus came to this earth to die to pay the penalty for you and for me because I deserve to be separated from God forever. You deserve to be separated from God forever. But God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for us. And I just think about some of the words in Luke 2. Luke chapter 2 in the Bible is where we see the record of the account of of the birth of Jesus Christ and some of the things that took place there. I just want to point out just very quickly, just a couple of things. I know you came here for the program, but this is such an exciting message to think about what Jesus, why he came and the message behind everything that we want to try and accomplish here as a program is that in, in Luke chapter two, it said in verses 11 and 12 that um, unto us is born this day in the city of David a savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be, what does it say? A sign. It'll be a sign for you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in this manger. The birth of Jesus Christ is no secret. <laughs> it wasn't meant to be a secret. It was a sign for us, and even today, Pastor mentioned it this morning, that, that in the hustle and bustle of everything that takes place, the pressure becomes more and more to to get rid of the message of Christ, and it's more and more about fables and fairies and, and Santa Claus. But the message of Christmas is all about Jesus Christ and why he came. Year by year, the focus becomes less about Jesus and more and more about me. <laughs> more and more about what we want. And the reality of Christ's physical arrival to this earth can never be ignored. It's a sign. It's a sign for us to think about. It's a visible sign that God came to earth as a savior to, to provide salvation for you and for me. Another thing to think about is not only is it a sign, but the shepherds in their response to what was going on here took a look in verse, in verse 15. If you have your Bibles, I'm just in Luke 2. I'm just skipping around to a couple of verses. But it says, when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem to see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And the birth of Christ ought to move us to want to see more of him. They wanted to go see. They wanted to see what this message was all about. Uh, we must never remove baby Jesus from Christmas. <laughs> we should see what is this about what is this, this birth of Christ really all about? There are people all over the world who have heard about Jesus Christ. And perhaps there's a lot of people that are desirous to know more about him and, and even to see him. And we ought to tell them and share that with them. But as believers, when we hear of Christmas, we have to pursue who Jesus Christ is. The reality of his birth, the reality of baby Jesus, and desire to see more of him. That's really what it ought to be. And that was what the shepherds did. Mary had an interesting response in the passage as well. In verse 19, and perhaps you know it, it said, And all those who heard it wondered at what the shepherds had told them, but Mary did what? She treasured these things in her heart. And the shepherds were not ashamed to share what had been made known to them. They went out and they proclaimed that. And many people will wonder, as you proclaim the message of Jesus Christ, they'll wonder, what is it they're talking about? Maybe they've heard it before. Maybe they know and understand what you're talking about, but maybe they're desirous of more. But Mary, who knew a little bit and tasted a little bit of this, understood and she treasured this in her heart. And for you and me to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you know him, it will drown out all the buzz and all the hype that tries to squelch the meaning of who Jesus Christ is. If you know him, cling to the fact that you know him and the reality of what it has all been about and treasure who he is in your heart and it will drown out all of the buzz that's going on around us. We have to cling to who he is and treasure that. 
And as a result of an, as an expression of what we've just heard and what we see and what we know as we're surrounded this Christmas season in verse 14 and 20, 14, it's a glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased, or peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And then in verse 20, and the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard as it had been told to them. You see, when we do know these things and when we hear these things, it elicits a, a public expression. It elicits a response of praise and, and rejoicing in who Jesus Christ is. Great rejoicing occurs when we realize the undeserved provision that has been made on our behalf. Isn't that a great thing to rejoice? To praise God for what he has done for you and for me in providing his son, Jesus Christ. So just a couple of key thoughts here. Don't ignore the opportunity to point out the visible sign of Christmas, the birth of Jesus, the baby Jesus. Pursue the joy that Christ offers by going out of your way to make his name known. Help people to see who Jesus Christ is. And if you know Jesus as your savior, treasure that in your heart. Not the idols of materialism and all the buzz and the hype that's around you, but treasure the reality of who Christ is in your heart. And then worship him. Praise him for who he is. Not just during the Christmas season, but everywhere. Everywhere you go, it's a great opportunity. And uh, we've tried to point you to the Savior today through a message, a simple message of who Jesus Christ is. And perhaps that's some of the conversation that took place in heaven. We don't know. <laughs> but it's kind of fun to think about. And it points us to the reality of Jesus Christ. So thank you so much for being here. Let's stand together. And I will just dismiss us in a word of prayer. And we want to encourage you uh, to greet all of the children that are a part of the program here today. And then for all of the kids, as you're on your way out, we'll have some people stationed at the, at the back doors back there. There is some uh, gifts for all of the children in the church as they leave here this morning. We're just so grateful for all the kids of our church. And don't forget to go right back out into the fellowship hall for cookies and fellowship. You can't ignore that, can you? A uh, great opportunity, a uh, uh, time for you to sit down and, and just think about what God has been doing here today. So let's pray. Thank you so much. God, we are grateful for your son, Jesus Christ, and we're grateful for the opportunity to um, really to put on a program here that, that reminds us of who you are. And amid all the distractions and all the things that take place, God, we want our focus to be on you. We want to remember who you are during this season, and maybe this would just be a, a little memory marker for us uh, to take home with us and to take back to our families and thinking about who Jesus really is. It's in the name of our Savior, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. You are dismissed. Thank you so much. You know, the greatest need that we have in our life is to come to know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Churchianity is not Christianity. Just because you go to church, just because you're baptized, does not mean you know Christ the Savior. You see, the Bible makes it very clear that we have to be perfect to get to heaven. And no matter how many good things you do, you can never become perfect. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ came to this earth and he died upon the cross to pay for your sin. When he took your sin, he also gave you his righteousness. The Bible says that he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And that's why the Bible also says, for God made him Christ to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, this would be a great time for you to put your trust in Christ by receiving His free gift, by putting your trust in Him, the one who died on the cross for you. If there's anything we can do to help you, please give us a call. We'd love to help you come to know Christ, to know Him better, and also make Him known to others. You know, if you love Christ, you also love His body. And of course, His body is the church. And so if you don't have a church that you attend, we invite you to come and visit us at Calvary Baptist Church this week. Our service times are 9.30 and 10.30 for our worship service, and Sunday night at 6 o'clock. We'd enjoy seeing you this Sunday.